Hello, and welcome to Inductive Conversations. My name is Arnel J. Ignacio, and in today's podcast, we're going to be starting a brand new series called How'd You Get Here? Uh, in this podcast series, we're going to explore uh, the journey of an IA employee from the very beginning, uh, starting when they chose to work for Inductive Automation, all to, uh, to the point of where they are now. And what better way to start this podcast series uh, than to interview our, our brand new CEO, Colby Clegg. Colby, thank you for joining us today. Of course. Great to be here. Um, before we begin, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Let's see. I got I met Steve in 2003 when I was uh, attending UC Davis. And, um, you know, since that time, I've, I've been here uh, helping to build and, uh, you know, develop next automation and software. And uh, just a few weeks ago, I was uh, had the fortune to be able to take over this role as CEO. So uh, I'm excited to, to be here and talk about kind of the whole story if you want. Yeah, excellent. Well, yeah, thank you. And congratulations on this on this new role. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about this. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's what, more than about 20 years, 19, 20 years ago, you started you started on this, uh, this journey, this adventure. Um, yeah. You know, we, you know, just a little background, both you and I were we were at UC Davis, and we were involved yeah. in, you know, some musical projects back in that time. Uh, but, but, you know, you were, you were getting involved into, into this thing that you're working on, uh, today. And so can you give us more insight, uh, as to how that started and, um, you know, how did you first hear about that opportunity? Sure. Yeah. You know, um, it's interesting. There are a number of people here at Inductive Automation that all come from that, um, initial point at UC Davis. We're all friends and whatnot. Uh, so Arnell, uh, and for the listeners, you know, there's an Easter egg out there in the, in the internet world of an EP that we recorded together at some point. But uh, all right. So, you know, in the computer science circle at Davis, um, I was friends with uh, Carl. And in that group, there was, um, I had another friend. Um, and he was friends with somebody else. Uh, one, Nathan Boger, who uh, actually just uh, came back to work here full time very recently after uh, completing a career in the Navy. So, okay. Nathan was a friend of a friend. Nathan uh, grew up, his parents were family friends with Steve and Wendy. Um, so towards the end of junior year, Nathan uh, came up to me and he had kind of just been in my circle of friends. And he said, Hey, are you interested in a summer job? I work for a, a small company in Sacramento that does industrial automation and the owner, um, well, they need a new website, right? That was the idea. And I had been doing a lot of website work and, you know, that kind of stuff in college to make money. And so I said, yeah, of course. So I went out to Sacramento and I was able to meet Steve and I worked on the website for a day. But then at the end of the day, he, we got to talking and um, basically he was like, you know, we've been, we, he kind of told me what they did. You know, I had no idea about, you know, how anything about industrial automation. Right. But he told me about what they did as a systems integrator. And, you know, he said, I've been doing this since, you know, 1985. And this was 2003 again. And he goes, you know, I, I just see like so many ways that we could use leverage, um, you know, open source, open source software and, uh, and, and technology that's available freely to do great things in an industry that, you know, is so costly and so, you know, burdened by old, you know, out of date software. So that was very exciting. He had an idea for a specific thing he wanted to do. And um, I said, you know what, I like working on software a lot better than websites. So, you know, I'd be interested in working on that. And that's kind of how it started. So that was um, right before the summer after my junior year. And so I just kind of worked on it during the summer. And uh, that was the start, I guess. Excellent. And so is that something that you thought would continue past, you know, once you graduated college? I mean, you know, you know, you, ha you have these, all these opportunities that you would probably have in front of you. So, and then you mentioned, you know, industrial software and, and you know, the industrial space is kind of, I mean, it definitely it's different from, you know, more of the, uh, consumer side, you yeah. know, kind of like more of the Silicon Valley side. Yeah, so absolutely. What, what made you decide to continue on that path? Yeah, I, it is interesting. I, I'll, I'll admit up front that um, happening into the industrial automation world to me has been one of the most uh, fortuitous events of my life, right? Because I've been programming since I was, you know, 13. So computer science was always something I loved. I love developing software. So, but I didn't have a very robust plan of what to do. I just knew I wanted to do that. And, you know, in the time and place, it was a very, you know, uh, in-demand thing. You know, I, I grew up outside of Silicon Valley in the dot-com boom. You know, I was in high school during 
you know, I went to college actually the year before the whole bubble burst. So that was interesting. <laughs> but in my mind, yeah, I just thought, oh, I'll go work for Microsoft or Google after college. I didn't really give it much more thought than that, you know, kind of follow it, like get an internship and then try to get in. That was that was my rough plan through college. But um, but once, you know, like I said, through college, I was doing kind of entrepreneurial type things. I was I was I had little businesses. Um and uh, with some of my friends and doing that kind of stuff. So I always kind of liked that aspect, you know? So when I met Steve and, you know, we started with this as a, as a project, basically, you know, what can you build over the summer? Can we get this, you know, functionality done? And then, you know, it just snowballed in terms of, you know, once we got something up and running, using it for a customer, we want to do the next thing, the next thing. I, uh, you know, right off the bat, like months in, I got Carl involved. Um, so really from the beginning, we were both working on it together. And so then it was just, you know, fun. And there was just, you know, it, we, I, I guess I just kind of got caught up and here we are 19 years later. <laughs> it just kept, it just kept going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, that's pretty cool, you know, to, to have started something at that point and then yeah. to be where, where you are now. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you've gone in a little bit into it, but describe your experience. Like what, you know, is there anything memorable about that mm -hmm. early experience you know, because this is the time before yeah. inductive automation was inductive automation. You're, you're kind of like building this, this, this product. So, you know, is there anything that, that pops out to you during that time? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it, it wasn't exactly a product yet. I mean, we had, it had a name and whatnot, but it was, it was a tool for uh, CalMetrics, the integration company, you know, to, to serve the needs of the customers, to do what the customers wanted, you know, get data, store it, make it visible and accessible to people. So, um, yeah, the early days, you know, we were just trying to work on that functionality. Um, memorable. Yeah. And so once we got to a certain point, it, you know, a lot of customers don't want to just buy software from an integrator because it's a little bit risky, you know, integrators, you know, it's like a, it's a relationship. It comes, it goes, whatever. So they, so we immediately, you know, Steve said, we have to have a, a separate company. We have to have a name if we're going to sell this to, to other people. And so that's, you know, that's what we did. And, um, and we knew we had something to offer, but the most memorable part, honestly, this is like a classic story, um, you know, was trying to sell it. We make the website, we, we give it a name, we go out there, try to sell it to the public. And, you know, everyone initially just kind of laughed at us, you know, not the CalMetrics customers, but like, you know, the first trade show we went to, they literally laughed at us. They said, you know, why would we need another software package like this? You look around and there are probably a dozen different companies selling, you know, SCADA software, industrial software, right? Why do we need another one? So that's pretty, pretty classic. Um, and at that same trade show, so I had this experience, right? Somebody says, you know, we don't need this. Somebody else says, I don't know. And then, but, you know, took my card. Uh, that person became one of our earliest and best customers. And we went on to have, you know, an over 10 year relationship with that uh, individual who, who worked for a government laboratory. But, um, really, you know, great, uh, relationship until he retired. And so that's kind of, I love that, you know, the dichotomy of like at that same show being told, you know, you're not going to make it. And then also, you know, establishing kind of a, something that became kind of emblematic of how we, you know, do business with people. Yeah, no, that that's, that's excellent. You know, and, um, you know, when you, when you created, when you created this first instance of the software, you know, at, at, a, per, at a certain point when you guys were developing it, at what point did you say, this is something like, was there like a, a moment where you watched it do something was there anything like that that you said okay this is this is something a little you know amazing you know really truly you know steve had such a pent-up understanding of like what he was trying to deliver to customers that right off the bat we were able to do things for customers where they were just like wow this is incredible this is great um but i think where it started to really like you know when it got to a certain level of maturity, of course, with the software, you could actually install it and it worked and, and whatnot, then watching, you know, how it just grew organically was really something. Um, okay. So I have two stories that come to mind. Uh, one is, you know, okay. The first time, this is just kind of silly, but nonetheless, like I said, you know, Carl and I, the other people, we didn't, we, <laughs> we came from the software world. We weren't in the industrial automation world. So early on, we went to one of our first customers to go visit them just to visit their production facility it was over in Berkeley, not that far away. And we walk in and we walk through and I believe it was a, a printing operation. They had like printing presses and stuff. And we're walking through and we look up and there's a touch screen, right? 
and it's running our software. It's running, you know, what was called factory PMI at the time, the visualization software. And the guy reaches up and hits the button and the machine starts running. And Carl and I just looked at each other like, oh my gosh, this is real. <laughs> like, like it actually, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> like it actually worked. So that, that was cool. But then in terms of kind of more to what you were asking, I think, um, you know, Steve had these certain, you know, like you, I'm sure a lot of people have heard these pain points and whatnot. There's like, like things he really cared a lot about. One was that it should be able, you know, you should be able to install it quickly and easily Two, that it should be unlimited, right? And and what that meant was unlimited data, but it also meant like unlimited, you know, being able to launch clients and give access to people. And so, you know, I, I think one of the great stories that, that he likes to tell, and I think it is a great story, is that um, he was visiting a customer. At this time, you know, he was still doing PLC programming and all of that. He's at the customer doing some work. The customer kind of expresses an issue, you know, saying, oh, I wish I could get this or whatever. He goes, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay. He heard it. And then the customer went off and was doing some work. By the time the customer came back, he had installed our software on a machine right there. He's like, you know what? Don't worry. You don't have to buy this right now. You can run it in demo mode, hit reset every two hours, you know, but I just threw this in there for you. He goes back like two weeks later and all of a sudden they had like five projects built and they were using it across like 20 or 30 people. Right. And, and that was, that was just, we were just blown away. Like people could take something and grow it and, and it would just grow, you know, spread, you know, and that's probably when it really hit us that, you know, there's something to the, to this methodology. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and I and I think it still is up to it to its uh, to what it's doing now. Like you just give the software to anybody, and within a short amount of time, uh, customers have multiple projects built out, and it's doing amazing things. And you know, as you've seen, the community has developed some of the most amazing projects. Some 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 of which we've yeah. never really imagined could be possible, but it's just great to see. You know how this interplay between what you you guys were doing and what the customers are doing, and then building that you know the software along the way, and it's evolved quite tremendously since then. Yeah. Um, so leading into that, you know, we're going to talk about the the journey from when you started up to now. So when I got into inductive automation, <clears throat> I believe you were uh, the co director of software engineering with with Carl. Mm -hmm. um, were you? Did you have any titles or uh, roles before that? Before you became the co director? Well, you know, it's, it's truly a, you know, a story of, of, of a bootstrapped company coming out of the integration company that just grew organically. Right. So it's like all along the way, we've had to develop the titles, develop the roles, shift them over time, you know, uh, you know, kind of get, our, get in too deep and then figure out what we're doing and improve, you know, so it's been a very organic process. So I don't know, you know, titles before that we just, we got to the point where we needed to have directors in the company for the different, you know, divisions that were starting to form. Um, Carl and I have always been just, you know, peers uh, in terms of, uh, you know, it, the collaboration on the software. It's just been, that's part of, you know, it's been wonderful, but we kind of represent kind of, we always just naturally had, you know, I was on the data side, he's on the visualization side. And so, so that's just kind of how it went. Yeah. Co-directors. And then um, all the way to now today where I, you know, I, now I get to be CEO and he has now uh, become CTO. Um, I still see that, you know, kind of collaboration there, you know? Yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, looking back, you know, in those 19 years, did you ever imagine this happening? Like, did you ever imagine this progression? No, it's hard to say that. No, we, we were, we were actually talking about that recently and it's, you know, cause people, you know, they ask that often and, um, and, and trust me, by the way, I have to say right out of the gates, I don't feel like we've, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not, there yeah it's just as exciting now there's so much more to do you know but in regards going back to 2005 six seven you know because it's been long enough now no you know you 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 build something you know what you want to do you want to you want to you know you set these milestones you're trying to get out there get people using it but it's really hard to kind of see you know to you know you want to grow the company you know you want to be successful but you don't totally know what that means at the time yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah, you're just more focused on building this product and making it the best that it can be. Um, and yeah, yeah it, it, ha it has been, you know, and it's it's becoming, you know, de facto standard where we're getting to a point where, you know, it is uh, a lot of organizations are finding the value and the power of, of ignition. So yeah, uh, let's let's talk about the journey uh, in, here at uh, Inductive Automation. Can you, at a high level, walk us through what you what your journey looked like um, when you first started all the way up to where you are now? 
Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it very much mirrors kind of the growth of the company and the the different structures we've put in place over time. Um, but, you know, initially, you know, we were the, you know, only developers, Carl and I, and then we became the lead developers as we started to build a team. And then we became uh, co-directors, you know, it was a natural step as we, you know, to, to, you know, add that management layer to the team. Over the years, we continued to add, you know, managers and whatnot. And, um, and then a few years ago, we introduced a, uh, a new corporate structure for the VP layer. So, you know, as we continue to grow and, you know, we realize that, you know, having the CEO uh, interact directly with, you know, 15 different directors wasn't feasible. So we added the, the VP layer and I, I uh, took that role on to help uh, establish that VP of technology. And, um, and then leading up to, to this year, just recently when Steve asked me to, um, to step into the CEO role so that he and Wendy could uh, focus on the uh, executive chairman of the board role for themselves. So that's, that's been the progression. Excellent. Excellent. And when you had that conversation that you were, uh, were to be elevated to CEO, what was your initial thoughts? What were you, what were you feeling at the time? Oh, well, I mean, it was a surprise. I, I, I mean, to a degree, you know, I've always been very involved in the business, right? Steve and I work really closely together um, and we're always working on strategy and whatnot. So, so that aspect of it, you know, is, is fine. You know, I, I doesn't, you know, but, um, but, you know, this isn't, you know, in typical Steve fashion, you know, he gets an idea and then uh, things can move pretty quickly. So it was a little bit, of, you know, so that was, that was kind of fun, but uh, it was a whirlwind. Uh, but over the next, you know, we took a few months to, 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 to organize our plans. And uh, so it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of, uh, you know, it's very exciting. Um, but, but yeah, it's been, it's been quite the whirlwind. I can imagine. I can imagine. And uh, <clears throat> you know, you know, we 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 send out a lot of communications, and you know, we see a lot of chatter and social media. Has there, has you, have you seen any like uh, immediate feedback uh, on this announcement? Well, I mean, a lot of positive support. You know, I mean, I think the 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 wonderful thing is that you know we've had such great relationships with so many customers over the years that it's been, you know, just really very you know a lot of kind messages and supportive messages. So that that you know, I appreciate that greatly, but. Uh, so yeah, the support of the community has been wonderful. So uh, in, in your new role, um, what what do you envision the future to look like for the company, the software, and for the industry? What is what is something that you see uh, moving forward? Well, I, I see an interesting kind of crossroads at the moment. I I mean, I think that you know, coming out of the last few years, everyone knows that we've we've seen how a lot of these concepts we've been talking about for so long, you know, digital transformation, digitalization, all of these things that we've been working on for so long, how relevant they are right now. You know, I mean, March, 2020, I don't think there's a company in the world that didn't wish they had better, you know, remote access and control of their, of their, you know, processes and whatnot. So there's been a lot of changes, you know, we're in an interesting place right now. And I mentioned, you know, some of our, you know, historically fortuitous choices towards technology, right? And I, I see that playing out. I think we are in an incredible position to deliver what the market needs at a time it needs it the most, right? So that's that's just very exciting to me. I think we have an incredible uh, multi-year plan, probably for the first time, you know, ever, if I could say that. You know, we've always been focused on like just the next version, the next version, but we have a plan right now that I think just really, you know, is exciting to tie, you know, so many of the things we've been working on for years together uh, into the ecosystem that, that that's out there right now. And, and as we talked about, ICC is coming up uh, shortly here, and we have both an in-person and a virtual component. Um, and, and this is exciting because we're, we're going back into in-person. We're going to be able to meet up with our customers again and have that community. What is what is something that excites you about ICC this year? What is what is something that you look forward to it? Oh, I don't know what to expect. I mean, it's it's. I'm excited to get back there in person. I think everyone is right, and and I think that it, it'll be really interesting to see uh, after you know three full years have passed. You know, um, kind of just what it's like to get back together. You know, we've done two virtual ICCs and this will be a 
third one because it's an incredible way to connect to a, a, a huge audience, right? A lot more than we could ever fit over there um, at the facility. But um, yeah, to get back in, in person and um, and really just kind of see where things stand. You know, I feel like we're in this uh, interesting situation. It's kind of a paradox where over the last few years, it feels like nothing's changed yet. Of course, everything's changed, you know, or you can say it in reverse. I mean, it feels like the world's been turned upside down, but you know, we're just doing the same things every day, trying to, you know, deliver the core, you know, values and principles we have. So I, yeah, that's what I'm looking for is to to get there, talk to people and kind of see where things are. From your perspective and how you see the company uh, as a whole, what, how would you describe the culture here at Inductive Automation? Well, you know, one thing that's that's interesting is that, I, I mean, I, I truly think that throughout the entire company, you know, there's a real mentality that everyone just wants to like do their best, do the best we can for, for the customer, you know? And our HR team is kind of maniacal about about finding great people who share that that value, you know? And I think you see it, you know, throughout the whole company. So that's very you know, that's great. And, you know, again, I've talked to, uh, you know, I've, I think in this conversation, I mentioned, you know, Steve's vision originally and his, his kind of conviction. And that has translated through the years into like more structured, you know, definition of, of what our values are. You know, we talk about our four pillars um, that we try to focus on um, and, you know, and staying customer focused. So I think that those are some of the key you know, having that kind of foundation is uh, is really important for the company. You see the way it, it makes an impact. So, you know, I've, I've, I've heard uh, some feedback from some employees about, you know, the work, uh, work-life balance here at IA and that, um, you know, Nook of Automation has a good sense uh, on that. Um, is that something that you, you also uh, see as well? Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I think it's very, very important. You know, we've, we've made it a point over the last, uh, you know, for our whole existence, uh, or maybe, maybe I can't say that because, you know, the early days we were working pretty darn hard, but, but as we've grown and, you know, we found that we found a rhythm um, and we think that that work-life balance is really important. Um, yeah. So I, I, I really appreciate that aspect of our company. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and then you touched upon the, 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 the um, that inductive automation is a remote first company and uh uh, we've been seeing a lot more employees being hired, you know, across uh, the the United States. Now, do you find that has opened uh, a lot of opportunity for us and and for individuals? Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, and it's interesting because that was you know a 180 degree change from the way we did things before the pandemic. When um, you know when March, 2020, we immediately pivoted to remote first and we basically have never looked back. I think it's, um, it's a wonderful system we've established. You know, I think it, you know, we were able to leverage technology and we were just kind of just fortunate that we were in a position to be able to transition so easily. And so now we have, you know, we have employees that we've hired remotely. That's been great. We were able to hire back uh, previous employees that had to move because of whatever, you know, family situation. Um, and then we've had employees here who now have been able to, to move to, uh, to accommodate uh, a certain need or, or whatnot, you know? So I, I love it. I think it's, it's great. I think that, you know, um, there are, there are challenges of, of continuing to feel connected and, you know, and, and build a, a, a culture of, of, you know, that, that team spirit that has been so core to our company for forever. But um, I think we're doing a great job at it. And so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very happy with where we're at. Excellent. Yeah. It, it looks like we're, we're, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of great people and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, variety that's coming into our organization and that we're reaching out to, to all different um, areas uh, uh, of the United States. So I think that's, uh, that's excellent. There's a lot of programs that have been developed at Inductive Automation in terms of, you know, uh, a path for success. Can you talk more about that in terms of uh, um, how an employee can progress in our organization? Yeah, yeah, for sure. As we've grown and, and have, you know, created, you know, larger divisions, we've, we've recognized that it's important to kind of, uh, you know, create a structure and pathway around, around progressing, you know, because we have, for example you know, lots of technical roles uh, throughout the whole company. And so we created uh, initially what we called the technical pathways program. And so that's a, a, a program that's 
um, hosted in the support department. Uh, it starts off with the tech analyst role, and that's a place where you, people come in, they learn about you know the software, the technology, the industry, um, and then from there they can progress into support or into other technical roles in the company. And so that was um, that was a great program where, where we continue to evolve it and work on it, uh, and and now we're starting to replicate that over in the uh, what we call the prof professional pathway program over on the sales side and the more you know uh, non non you know purely technical roles. So yeah, we care. I mean, like I said, as an organically grown company, I think there's just built into us this mindset of 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 to, you know career development and and growth and so you know as we grow and uh become bigger and bigger it's important for us to to add structure that maintains that you know no no i think and i, I think that's excellent and it gives a lot of employees uh a clear you know a somewhat clear vision of where they can progress in the organization so i think that's a fantastic thing to have and they're great programs um so d during this time during your journey into ia uh, is there anything uh, Anything memorable, like um, anything that jumps out to you as, as some of the most memorable moments um, to you? Well, I already mentioned, uh, you know, the early trade show, but then, you know, down the road, um, you know, it's just there's, there's a lot of, of course, memorable moments in terms of um, just discovering what people can do with the software, um, you know, some of the development cycles when we went from uh, the legacy products into ignition. Um, that was a major, major move that we made back in 2010. We started that in 2009. There's a lot of interesting stories around that. But um, you know, since I mentioned what customers can do, you know, can do with it, I guess one, if I can jump to like ICC for example, uh, and maybe we'll talk more about ICC, the, the Ignition Community Conference. But um, you know. We started that conference and I, we're coming up on our 10th, 10th edition of it right now, uh, next month. But we started that conference and we didn't know what to do, what to expect. And the first year was just so much work, so much work to put on. And it was a, it was a great event. It was really great. And, you know, but the next year we said, wow, okay, this is, you know, we have to do it again, but this is way too much. We, uh, we should do it every other year at least, or maybe never again. I don't know. You know, it's a great event, but it's a lot of work, right? So we, yeah, so we, so we, we, so we show up there. And um, so this would have been 2014, I believe. Right. Uh, so we show up there at the second edition and on stage the first day, I believe Steve says, uh, or one of us say, says, okay, you know, this is great. We're going to go to every other year. And then immediately after we got out of the keynote, people were just like, uh, uh, like, 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 we don't like this. Like we're going to show up next year, no matter what, like whatever. And we said, oh, okay, okay. But what happened there really, what happened was that at that conference, you know, people would come up to us and say, Hey, look what I've, look what I've done. Look what I've built. Look what we're doing. And the next morning before the second day keynote, we were all right behind the curtain, Steve, Carl, myself, Travis, I think we're all there. And we're just like, it is insane what people are doing. They're doing things we didn't even know were, were possible with our software. And we're all telling stories, right? And that's when it struck us that like, if we don't do this every year, you know, how, you know, how this is the best place to learn about what people are doing, you know? And, and that's when the tide turned between what we thought people needed and what, you know, we, you know, from, from the whole time we were building what, you know, what people asked for, but what we thought they needed to a place where we're like, we had to realize, you know, we don't know what people are doing with it now. You know, they're, it's taken on a life of its own. So that was a huge milestone for me, I think. No, and, and it's, it's, it's excellent that you mentioned that, you know, over, over the years, we've seen the community, the Ignition community, just run with the software and create amazing projects with it. And um, you could see that there's like this, this, this uh, mutual relationship that is happening between like development and our users where, you know, a lot of the things that they have been looking for, it does, you know, you know, to a certain degree, you know, right, gets into the software. So it's just amazing, you know, to see that relationship uh, between, between the two. I mean, um, you know, not a lot of companies have that type of, type of uh, uh, user base that's so vocal and so excited about the software, you know, so uh, and, and that's amazing. Well, I mean, and I think it really, you know, it starts with our roots being, you know, starting as an integrator, you know, we were out there using the software ourselves and, you know, Carl and myself, we did projects, you know, all of us early, you know, from up until, 
you know, I don't know, 2008 or nine, we were actively, you know, involved out there as well. And so we just developed from the start, this fundamental mentality of trying to create, you know, pragmatic and what we call, you know, tangible solutions, right? Just things that just solve problems, you know? And uh, yeah, it's fascinating. You know, as we grow and, and our customer base grows and whatnot, you know, the challenges change a little bit, but we're pretty dedicated to, to trying to stay true to those, those fundamental principles. Yeah, and I want to I want to get into this uh, to the idea of uh, like working at inductive automation. You know, um, I know there's a lot of conversations we had. It's a unique place to work in, especially in the tech space. You know, you hear about like a lot of those um, Silicon Valley companies that that grow rapidly. You know, that offer a lot of all these different things. But you know, you know, a lot of those organizations are venture capitalist funded. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, fund seeding. Uh, but IA is different in that aspect. I mean, you've mentioned uh, that, you know, we are we started a bootstrap company and we have been organically growing. Can you talk more about that and how, how that's playing into the culture of our, of our company? Yeah, it is interesting. It kind of represents, you know, in some circles, a little bit of a, an old, you know, old school way of building a business, right? Um, not very techie to a degree, but it's, um, to me, fundamental to our success in the industrial automation space. So, you know, it's about kind of overlaying, you know, what we do, how we do it and what the, the industry that we're in needs, right? It's an industry that, that looks for long-term relationships. I mean, okay. So in the early days, right, we spent probably the first five years of selling our software, explaining to people how we'll be around, how we'll be, you know, everyone say, how do I know you're going to be here in 10 years? I, I need this software to be around for 20 years or whatever, you know, these to, say these things all the time. And, you know, venture capital and whatnot, the, the system that's predominant right now, you know, it's great for, for, for enabling people to, to test ideas and, you know, uh, you know, try fast, fail fast, whatever, you know, that's fine. But then even when it works, right, those, those, the whole scheme is built around an exit strategy and, you know, an eight to 10 year window typically, right? So the approach we've taken, it just, it lets us be so much more, you know, calm and long-term thinking and, uh, y you know, and I think that th that then has an impact on the whole experience that people have here, you know. So in in, in terms of, you know, in, in your personal view of uh, working here at IA, what, what drives you day in, day out to do what you do? Well, for me personally, I mean, it, there's, there's no end to the number of things we can do, right? We are very fortunate. We, you know, have made choices from the start that, um, you know, are technologically fortuitous in terms of choosing technologies and methodologies that have now come into, you know, to a place over the last few years that where they're just as relevant as ever, right? And, you know, and our customer base is incredibly diverse. We, we, we very, very carefully chose, you know, what we, would work on and put into the software to keep the, 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 the applicability broad. Right. So now we have a customer base that's very diverse. So, you know, with those two things, there's just so much potential. And so, you know, uh, like anything, and especially after doing it for so long, you can get kind of bogged down in the details of this and that, but when you step back and you look at the opportunities and, uh, kind of just the fun of, of creating things that help people, uh, that's what I still get just as excited about as ever. Right. Um, yeah, and I think, I think that that has, you know, that that culture of, of focusing on customers, of solving customer issues, driving the, the fun from like solving problems. I see it throughout the whole company. You know, I see it, you know, obviously support, sales, training, all these people I interact with, uh, you know, and, and for the other divisions of the company, like, you know, that are a little bit more internal, we're always trying to think of how we can get them, you know, to, to feel that and to kind of see that you know, customer side, you know, even more, because I think it's just what makes us special, honestly. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's, it's great to see everyone working together for, for, you know, the common goal, you know, and yeah, from my perspective, yeah, everyone is looking to solve a problem, wherever it may be, whether it's be, you know, with the customers or whether internally, but I think we're all driven to, to solve, you know, problems and achieve some great things uh, out of the, the collaboration that we have here at Inductive Automation. Um, <clears throat> so, um, do you, do you, do you see any, uh, challenges that, that could be uh, of an issue for you? 
I suppose, you know, a couple of the challenges are, um, one, it's hard to find people right now. You know, uh, we've, we've gone remote first, which is great for, you know, being able to hire people remotely, but, uh, well, you know, the, the, the job market is tough and, and just finding the, you know, the people we need is, is hard, you know, so capacity is an issue. Um, I think the other thing is that, you know, like I said, the, the, the flip side of, of having such a diverse customer base is that, you know, now as we get, you know, deeper into these different industries, um, you know, the, the requests and the, you know, the needs get ever more, you know, exigent. And, um, and so, you know, it's a challenge to keep up with that. Um, yeah. And then, and then finally, you know, we, uh, have always approached, um, the, the market, uh, from, uh, you know, leveraging technology to reach as far as we can from our, from our core hub, you know, we have uh, a select group of distributors right now around the world. There's, there's eight of them, uh, people, you know, companies that we've, we've found who, you know, replicate our ideology and who can work really closely with us. But I think reaching, you know, the broader market, the broader world is, uh, it's a, you know, it's a challenge. Yeah. So um, among, among like, uh, the, the talents that you have here at inductive automation, you have the talents outside of work. Uh, you know, I, from what I understand you speak Italian. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, how long, how long have you been, uh, uh, you know, speaking Italian? Oh, I got started, uh, at the end of my college time because, uh, I, I, I actually, so my degree is computer science engineering with a minor in Latin. So I took Latin for like eight years from high school and then continued in college as just something I like to do. But finally, I got to a place where I was like, okay, this is not <laughs> entertaining anymore. <laughs> and I thought, well, what can I do with this? And I go, well, I'm going to pivot it. And I thought, so I, I, I sat there and I thought, okay, I got to go to some sort of romance language. And so I picked Italian and then I got started and then I loved it. And so then it kind of went from there. And then eventually I was able to connect it to work and I have a wonderful relationship with our distributor EFA in, in Italy. And I, I get to go out there and do presentations and meet customers and it's just the most fun. So it's really become a, a part of my life. Excellent. No, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and then other things that I, I know is that I know you were uh, a bowler in, in college. Is that something mm -hmm. you still do today or no. or no? No, I don't. But it's, it's you know, it's, a, you know, I, my family, we did that. Uh, that was like what we did together. It was great. Um, and it was through there, you know, most people I think don't know this, but everyone knows Travis Cox, you know, Ignition yep. Wizard Extraordinaire, our new chief technology evangelist. Um, I met him. I was 16. He was 13. I met him in a bowling league uh, oh. back home. And so then we became friends and we started a business together um, and uh, did technology work through, you know, high school and then college as well. And so then it's just followed along as well. So, yeah. Do you ever and we were on the bowling team in college, too, oh. which was really a, really a disaster. <laughs> that guy, though, I mean, you know. That guy, he's good. He's good. I was never good. He was super good. So I think he's got something like 30 or so 300s under his belt or something. Oh, geez. Yeah. I think he's, he's still, he's competing still, right? Like, uh, oh, I don't know. You'll have to ask him, but, oh, okay. um, but yeah, I do remember, you know, I think now that he's got kids and stuff, it's less serious, but, uh, you know, f but right before that, for a little while, I think he went out with a bang with, uh, I believe the, the men's high average for the entire state of California for something like Oh, one or two seasons. So. That's, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I would, I, I, do you ever imagine yourself getting back into it or is it just something that's. Yeah, <laughs> I tried, but <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't go very well. So I've, I've pivoted to other things like uh golf and uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, uh, and then as we spoke in the, you know, uh, previously, you know, we were involved in some music projects uh uh, and then you said we had an EP. Are, are you still playing guitar or is that something that's kind of an off and on thing or? Yeah, not much at all. I did just, I brought it out the other day just for fun and I, I realized how much I missed it. But uh, yeah, no, I haven't been doing, doing very much. Okay. I also have a banjo on my wall that I got that I intend to, to pick up at some point. That oh. was my, <laughs> my new adventure, but I haven't done that yet. Yeah, just, yeah, you can just join the IA band. <laughs> Expand it. That's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. IA band. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, and it's like, are there any other hobby? I, you, I know you, you cycle, right? You go, you, mm -hmm. um, is that something that you do quite often? Yeah, no, I love cycling. I, you know, it's, I never thought I'd get into it. I, there's a really funny story about how, um, a while ago, like, I don't know, 2009 or 10, I think, you know, Steve was into it for a little while because, um, 
he was into it for a little while. And so he had like conductive automation cycling jerseys made for everyone. And I got this and I was like, well, that's nice. But I was like, you know what, you know, you'll find me, I don't know, dead, dead in the river before you ever see me on a bike or something. I don't know what I said. It was pretty, pretty high. I like to be a little dramatic. And I was like, yeah, I'm never gonna use this. Uh, and then, you know, years later I started. And so my wife still like makes fun of me. And I'm like, do I still have that inductive automation jersey around? She's like, no, don't you? So I started that in 2015. And then um, it, it made me really appreciate where we live. This area, Folsom, California is uh, just amazing for cycling. Um, the surrounding area is, has been the training grounds of some of the, the most famous cyclists, actually, you know, Greg Lamont and, and, and now today, even Nielsen Powis, who's in the Tour de France and whatnot is right here. So it's wonderful. And then this is the epicenter of the California gold rush. So you're out there riding around and that was just a part of history that I love learning about in school. And then one day I was out there riding around, look up, you know, right on the other side of the lake is, is where gold was originally found, right? Uh, Sutter's mill. So it's really made me appreciate where I live. And so I love that. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, have you, have you uh, competed in any way in, in, in cycling at all or? Uh, co competed? No, that was never a desire of mine, but I, I have, you know, what kind of got me interested in it was the idea of going long distances, you know, going through scenic areas. And so I've done a lot of that. I've been able to go, um, you know, you know, not just this area out to the coast. There's some great events they do. Levi's Grand Fondo, um, as an event out in Santa Rosa to the coast, it's absolutely beautiful. So to be able to do those things were major accomplishments. And then uh, I've gone to Europe a few times and whatnot to ride. And so it's a great way to see, you know, see the area. Okay. Well, this uh, wraps up our, our first episode of How'd You Get Here, uh, here with Colby Clegg, uh, the new CEO of Inductive Automation. Colby, thank you so much for joining us today. We uh, highly enjoyed our conversation and thank you uh, for all that you're doing uh, for us. No, well, thank you, Arnell. It was really great to chat with you. And uh, I, I look forward to, you know, seeing you at ICC and seeing everyone. Yep, we will do. See everyone at ICC. Thank you.